Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and today got another Linux OS review for you. Today we are taking a look at Manjaro 1509. This is the XFCE desktop environment, and we are running this at 64-bit. Now, it's been a while since I looked at the XFCE version of Manjaro. Um, you know, it's one of the two desktop environments offered by default from the Manjaro team, the other being KDE. Now, there's a lot of desktop environments available in Manjaro, but most of the, uh, for the most part, the others are community editions uh, developed by the community and whatnot. And, uh, you know, not that those aren't good or anything, but I thought, you know, let's take a look at the, uh, you know, the quote unquote official Manjaros for uh, for a while, especially since uh, we've got this new release here. Now, 1509, they've got their new installer available, and not too long ago, I, I used the installer, um, played around with it a little bit, did a, did a video uh, demonstrating the new installer. Uh, the new installation, it, it is much, much smoother than, uh, than the old installer. Uh, at least in my case, everything worked perfectly no issues crashes anything like that no glitches so uh, two thumbs up to the Manjaro team on that new installer so taking a look at the release info let's go there and uh, talks a little bit about XFCE uh, XFCE edition remains our flagship offering and has received the attention it deserves um, Ship XFCE 4.12 with this release of Manjaro, mainly focused on polishing the user experience on the desktop and window manager and on updating some components to take advantage of newly available technologies. And scrolling a little farther down, we're using the 4.1 LTS series for our kernel. And let me go and pull over from our Manjaro settings manager. You can see we're on kernel 4.1.9-1. That's what we've got running. And, uh, you know, while we're talking about the kernel, one thing that I've always liked about Manjaro is the variety of kernels available and how easy it is to go and update to, you know, in this case, you know, we go to 4.2.2, we go to 4.3 release, um, uh, release candidate, um, you know, whatever or you can even go and back go back to one of the earlier LTS kernels depending on you know maybe there's a piece of hardware that's uh, not playing nice with one of the newer kernels say uh, you could go and back port to uh, one of the older kernels and uh, you know while on other distributions you can go and change the kernel out I don't think anybody has such an easy way to change the kernel you know just you know pick one and click you gotta love it Continuing on with the release information, uh, Menda themes have been rebased on the excellent Vertex by Horse3180 with a great deal of Manjaro customizations and additions. Our Menda look and feel has been extended to include the Numix based icons and a breeze based cursor theme. And this is something that Manjaro has always excelled at and that is getting a consistent look across uh, you know, with their theming and their desktop, and you know, everything always looks nice on uh, on all of the Manjaro distributions. And this right here is that uh, that default Menda theme. And pulling over you know, our our uh, window manager settings, yeah, you know, they've got both the Menda and then the Menda Dark. But there's quite a few other themes that they offer. I mean, just kind of scrolling through the list there of what they've got available. I mean, there's just tons and tons of themes available. So, you know, if, if the Menda doesn't fit your fancy, I mean, there's plenty for you to, um, uh, you know, play around with, see what, what you like and whatnot. Uh, I was looking at some of these earlier today and uh, some really interesting ones in there. Some that are... Uh, you know, not really my thing, but, uh, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, I guess, uh, and, uh, you know, play around with them, find something that you like, or uh, just stick with the default Menda, which is uh, what I think I am going to do if I can find it again. Uh, there it is. 
Other new stuff in this release, if we go to our Manjaro settings, we now have a real nice graphical interface for managing time and date settings. Obviously, depending on what desktop environment you're running, this may not be a big deal to you. Say you're running GNOME or KDE, something like that. Yeah, this isn't a big deal. You can already do that through the DE. Um, but if you're using just a simple window manager or, or even one of the lightweight desktop environments, uh, this will be nice to have. Uh, we can also go and manage our notifications through this, uh, through this little interface right here. So those, uh, both of those, nice to have. And let me go and close that up. Another really nice thing, and I've been playing around with this in the past past couple of days, and that has to do with Steam. And if you look here in the uh, in the release notes here, it says Steam is now provided with two launcher choices, one for using the Natum system libraries and one for using Steam compatibility libraries uh, in an effort to bring the best compatibility and performance for different Steam games. And I will tell you, having played around with this past couple of days, there is a big, big difference on some of the games if you use the compatibility libraries. And uh, my understanding uh, from what I was reading is the compatibility libraries are based on the fact that uh, um, when Steam for Linux was developed, it was it was based on uh, Ubuntu libraries. Well, obviously, we're, we're playing around here with an Arch-based distribution. The compatibility libraries are basically, I guess you could think of, think of them as Ubuntu patched uh, libraries so that you can better run Steam. Um, like some games, it's not a big deal, but others, it, it makes a huge difference. Uh, I've been playing uh, War Thunder lately, don't know if you're familiar with it, but the, the difference um, between the compatibility and, and uh, the, the standard uh, launcher, it's a night and day difference. I mean, basically, without the compatibility libraries, uh, War Thunder was unplayable. Desktop layout remains essentially the same. We have a bottom panel with the whisker menu over on the left hand side. You can either click it to open or you can use the super slash window key and open it that way. We have a keyboard search that is integrated into the whisker menu. So let's say you're looking for LibreOffice, you know, you can just start typing away and it'll pull it up for you. Or you can go through the categories and, and do a traditional search that way. So next to the menu, we have all of our open windows and then we have our workspace. Workspace? Wow, just cannot talk today, huh? Uh, we have our workspace switcher right there and then we have our clipboard manager, uh, our internet connections, and then our uh, volume. This little guy right here is for our package manager and I'll talk a little bit more about that one in just a second. This one right here is for simple screen recorder which is what I'm using for my screen recording. Then we have time slash date which if you click it it'll pull up a simple calendar for you. And talking about the package manager, I'll just talk a little bit about that real quick. You can use this for either updating your packages or for installing new packages. This is PAMIC. Um, really, really like this. I've actually installed this on uh, on my Arch desktop and use it. Really great tool for uh, for installing your packages. If you're coming from a Ubuntu based distribution, you can think of this as something similar to Synaptic. Um, although I, I kind of like this a little bit better than Synaptic. You know, whatever it is that you're looking for, you know, you can do a search. Let's say we were looking for um, oh, you know, 0 AD, and it'll find. You know everything that's a match for you, or you can you know you can just scroll through and 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 go by that route. And if you do a right click, you can do an install, and then you've got options for optional dependencies, that kind of thing. Um, then you would click the uh, the little check mark right there, and it'll go and install for you. Boom. So let me go and close that up. And then you've got you got some different options as far as preferences here. 
Um, you can set it so that uh, you have AUR support enabled. That's probably the biggest one. And you can set it for searching in the AUR by default. Uh, that's something that I typically do. And then you can look at your, um, you can go and do a little tweaking as far as where you want your repositories to pull from and some general options right there. Well, let's do a quick run through of all of the applications included by default. Now, the only things that I have installed myself are GUVC View, which is my webcam viewer, and then also Simple Screen Recorder for doing the uh, screen recording. So, uh, starting out with the accessories, we've got an application finder, we've got a catfish file search, a bulk renaming tool, uh, Clipman Clipboard Manager, um, we've got our Archive Manager, we've got our Calculator, HP Device Manager, uh, Menu Editor, a Light, D, a Light DM GTK Greeter Settings, uh, Mouse Pad for our text editing, uh, Notepad, uh, our clock settings, screenshot uh, or yeah, screenshot uh, uh, application. Um, got our task manager. Thunar is our file manager, and XF burn for CD DVD ver burning. Under development, we've got quite a few uh, uh, Qt4 tools for uh, Qt development. Okay, scrolling down to games, we have the various Steam settings depending on whether, you know, which one of the libraries you want to use. In my case, I've got War Thunder listed here because I installed it wanting to see if there was a difference between the libraries. And like I mentioned before, huge difference on that game. Uh, graphics, we've got the GIMP, we've got LibreOffice Draw, we've got ViewNor for our image viewing. Under Internet, we've got Firefox for our browser, Hex Chat for Internet Chatting, Pigeon Internet Messenger, Steam is listed again, Thunderbird for our email. Under Multimedia, we've got our Audio Mixer, and sorry if I butcher the name on this, Guadalupe, I have, I, I have no idea how you pronounce it. All I can tell you is, this is an awesome music player if you haven't tried it. Um, definitely worth a look at if, if you haven't played around with it before. As I mentioned before, uh, GUVC View and Simple Screen Recorder, I added those myself. We've got our Pulse Audio Volume Control, and VLC Media Player, you know, VLC, essentially it'll play anything you throw at it, so um, probably the best uh, media player out there. And uh, XF Burn listed again. Uh, we've got the entire LibreOffice suite for our office needs, and we've got Orange Calendar for our calendar needs. Coming down to the settings, this has got all the variety of different settings, um, system settings, the Manjaro settings. In my case, I've since I'm running a AMD uh, a video card, I've got Catalyst settings, uh, I've got our appearance, all that kind of stuff is listed in here. And then down at, at in settings, or I'm sorry, systems. Uh, most of this we've already seen before. We've got our, our package manager, the bulk renaming tool, Gparted for partitioning, um, printer manager, the Manjaro welcome, um, task manager. Like I said, most of this we already looked at. Performance-wise, things have been running pretty good for me here. I installed this both my laptop and my desktop. And traditionally, Manjaro has been kind of glitchy on my ThinkPad laptop. Not this time. Uh, everything ran smooth. Uh, very good performance on there. On the desktop, I've had a couple of video glitches. I had one time where the whole screen background blanked out on me. Now it came right back, but it, you know, I basically went to white screen, and then when I tried moving a window around, everything came right back for me. So I had that. I've had a couple of times where the webcam viewer blinked on and off. Um, once again, uh, you know, uh, there wasn't anything I had to do. It just it came right back on its own. But I figured, you know, full disclosure, wanted to point out everything that I've run into. Um, but like I said, on the laptop, everything worked great. Um, so I'm, I'm on the desktop. I'm wondering if it might have been um, an issue with the Catalyst driver the, for the for the AMD uh, 
AMD graphics card. Not sure, but uh, you know, uh, full disclosure, wanted just to bring it up. But uh, you know, all in all, been pretty happy with this uh, with this release. So, having said all that, I think that about finishes up this review. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. Give us a big old thumbs up, thumbs down. Let me know what you think. As always, I will try to get to questions, comments, all that kind of stuff as soon as I possibly can. And I hope to see everybody on the next video. Thanks a lot.